More than two years after the Costa Concordia, it's about two and a half, uh, after Costa Concordia sank, it's finally headed home. Today, crews are planning to raise the ship more, tow it, and Paul Neitzel, a professor of the Mechanical Engineering uh, Department at Georgia Tech, is joining us live this morning to talk about this. I, I don't know what else to say it other than this maritime in crazy engineering feat. I mean, when I saw this thing on its side, Paul, I did not think it was possible to move a ship this size. Can you tell us, has it ever been done before and what goes involved in doing it? This is the largest ship that has ever sunk. It's twice the size of the Titanic, so it's a major, major undertaking. And admittedly, it's not in the middle of the Atlantic below a few thousand meters of ocean. It's on its side in 20 meters of water, but still it's an incredible feat to, to get it upright, to float it, and then tow it away. It sounds like a simple process in, in concept, but it's, it's very difficult. So what does it take? I mean, it's laying on its side. It's kind of on uh, the edge of like almost a reef, but it's kind of a shelf there. And there's deep water on one side of it. There's deep water on one side. It's, it's laying at about 70 degrees, if I can use this as a prop. Sure, sure. And uh, so the first thing that had to be done was the ship had to be righted. Uh -huh. Well, in order for the ship to be righted, there had to be some structure, some infrastructure underneath, bolted in, not bolted in, but attached to the seabed right. in order to support it. So that took a lot of time to design, build, and install. they had to build the structure underneath the that's ship correct. that's laying precariously above them. That's correct. And then they, they have to attach something to allow the ship to be floated. Normally you think, well, let's just pump the hull full of compressed air and, and refloat it the way it always did, but the hull's been compromised, so it's full of water. Okay. So what, we have to, what they have to do is to attach these large containers, these large empty metal containers called sponsons or, or caissons to the side of the ship. They initially fill the ones on, on the port side of the ship with water right. because then as they start to pull the ship into position, the heavy ca uh, caissons or sponsons right. actually help to ride it back by itself. And then they can float the other side well. As well, then they have to attach the sponsons to the other side. Gotcha. We're still not done because then they need to float the ship a little bit above its position and move it off, off site because they need to attach cables between the sponsons on both sides of the ship. Incredible that this, I don't think to this extent, had ever been done. But let me ask you this. Why not just leave it there, sink it down, and let it become like a, a coral reef barrier? Like, I think they've sunk other ships before, so why wouldn't you just dump it and get rid of it? I, I think it's, it's right on the shore. So it's not exactly easy to just shove it back down deeper into the sea. Okay. It's full of a lot of biological material. Gotcha. It's, it's got thousands and thousands of kilograms of, of meat, of, of milk, of ice cream, and all kinds of things that you all don't want there. to get in and contaminate the environment. And, and, and not only that, but all the other elements that are in a cruise ship that Correct. is made to carry people. Betting, all right, you know. Paul Neitzel, thank you so much for joining us from Georgia Tech. I appreciate it because this is one of those things that we just wanted to dive deeper in and understand how it was done.